Hi, I'm Charlotte Fisher, orthopedic surgeon at NYU Langone Health Spine Center. Thanks for joining me for this talk, Robotic Percutaneous Screw Fixation Tips and Tricks. So today I'm going to be reviewing the pre-op CT protocol as well as discussing some of the differences with the intra-op floral and intra-op CT protocol. I'm going to review some adjustments for placing robotic percutaneous screws in the lateral position and I'll be reviewing some tips and pearls as well as setting expectations for the first few cases. So for the pre-op um, CT protocol, you need a pre-op CT with one millimeter cuts, and then once that's merged with your system, you can plan um, your pedicle screws. So for in general, I wanna make sure my pedicle screws are well within the pedicle as long as possible. Um, and I make a few adjustments um, for when I'm doing a T-lift. First thing I do, I want to straighten out the T-lift side just a little bit. I still want as long as a screw as possible, but if you straighten out your screw just a little bit, then you're really reducing the amount of angulation you'll have to see with the microscope, as well as angulating the patient on the table. I want my cranial screws out of the facet joint, so that means a lower starting point with a little bit of cephalad angulation. Um, I check the bullseye view for each screw to make sure that the, um, the screw is in, within the shaft of the pedicle all the way along the length of the screw. I'm assessing for sky risk constantly um, and seeing if I need to make any adjustments for that. And then I want to check my skin incisions to make sure I can make one skin incision that will encompass all of the screws on the side. So here I'm doing, scrolling through the coronal bullseye view to make sure that that left L5 pedicle screw is within the pedicle um, the whole way as well as you can see that these, the screw trajectories are very close to each other, uh, so I'm going to have a, uh, a very small incision. Uh, after the patient is prepped and draped, then I want to place my fiducials, and I need to make sure that they are out of the way of the screw trajectory, as well as um, maintaining good line of sight um, with the reference camera. So that involves medializing the DRB and surveillance markers when I'm doing a, a T-lift. Then I want to get some intra-op images, including an AP and lateral for each level. And I'll review later that you could get a CT spin um, as well at this point. Next is the registration. So once you get your uh, AP and lateral views at each level, then you want to place a centroid in the center of each vertebral body. And then you're going to be checking between the pre-op CT and the intra-op uh, fluoro images to make sure there's very little movement at um, the vertebral bodies. So for this one, you can see the end plate of five seems to be growing somewhat, you know, moving up and down. So that means it's not a great match. Um, so I would redo that. And so here we redid it, and you can see the end plate is getting darker, but not actually moving up as much. And so that's a much better map. Then I want to check my screw plan, um, make sure where the software is dropping the screws matches what I would expect based on, off of my pre-op plan. Then I need to move the robot into range. So right here is uh, the four boxes represent each of the four pedicle screws. And when it goes from red to green, I'll show you that again. When it goes from red to green, that means that the robotic arm can reach all four trajectory, trajectories. Um, next, I want to do an anatomy check with the chicken foot device, just making sure midline is midline, um, right is right, left is left, everything looks appropriate as far as angulation and level um, of the lumbar spine. Um, and so it's just an extra uh, point of information. Next, I want to move the robot into position. So uh, green around the four uh, image boxes means that you are at the depth, on the trajectory and at the depth of the screw. Yellow around the four boxes means uh, you're on trajectory. So yellow here means you're on trajectory. And then once you get to green, it means you're at the depth for placing your screw. So I usually uh, review all of the screw trajectories and mark the spin. And then once I have dots for each screw on that side, then I can make an incision 
um, plan out my incision knowing that um, the screws uh, are going to be, I'm going to be able to get the trajectories through that one skin. Next is placing the screws. So you can see the it's going from yellow around each box here to green. So yellow means on trajectory. Um, green means you're at the correct depth for placing the screw at the depth that you planned. So first I start out with the burr. Um, there's a three millimeter burr and it allows you to um, sort of plane out and uh, reduce any skive. And then I take the drill and the drill is uh, the depth of the, uh, the pedicle, so it's a 25 millimeter drill, and uh, it has a positive stop, so it's not going to go further than just drilling the depth of the pedicle. Then I take the tap and uh, I place that uh, and seat that into the pedicle so that I know that it's surrounded by bone on all sides, and then I can stim at this point. Now the, the stimulation, if it gives us a level that's very different or unusual, then we can still um, look at, at things or palpate. Um, but you can see that getting the numbers from the stim is the slowest part of placing these uh, robotic percutaneous screws. Once we get a good number on the stim, then we can place the screw. So here we can see check marks at the three other uh, pedicle screw uh, spots. And uh, once the pedicle screw instrument um, is at the uh, depth planned on the pre-op imaging, then that green gets a check mark. And so once you have a check mark, you know that you've placed your screw um, where you planned it to go. Whether or not that's appropriate, that's up to you, but it's, it, the screw is where you told the robot to place it. Okay, so that was pretty much it for the um, robotic per for the um, pre-op CT protocol. And now I just want to say a little bit if you don't have a pre-op CT. So there are two options if you don't have a pre-op CT. One is the intra-op floral protocol and the other is an intra-op CT spin. So the intra-op floral protocol is basically mapping out the pedicles like we would think about when we're placing percutaneous um, jam sheeties to drop a wire into the pedicle. So you want to map out the the width of the pedicle in the nine to three position, as well as the anterior posterior aspect of the pedicle so that we can understand the first 20 millimeters of the screw trajectory. So, you, so with the software, you're gonna be dropping these lines on the widest part of the pedicle on AP films at nine and three o'clock. This is why it's so important to get perfect end plates on your a AP so that you can see the pedicle perfectly on FOSS and really understand it. You want the arrows to be with just within the border of the pedicle because if it's outside the border of the pedicle, you're just going to increase your chance for medial breach. And on your lateral film, you want the um, uh, posterior to anterior depth of the of your pedicle, and you don't want to go beyond the border of the uh, the posterior uh, vertebral body wall. So then once you place these arrows, then the software is gonna drop a screw. And you can move the screw along its trajectory, which I do, and so once I get the on the lateral, the screw to the back of the vertebral body wall, then I check the AP to make sure I'm within the medial border. And then I know that I don't have a breach there, and then it can continue on. So if you don't have a pre-op CT and you um, are able to get an intra-op CT spin, you just needed an additional fiducial for the CT spin, the intra-op CT spin, which looks like this. And then you can get your 3D CT spin, um, and then you can plan your screws just like you would for a pre-op CT protocol. Next, I'm just going to say a little bit about placing uh, robotic percutaneous screws in the lateral position. Um, you want the patient at the edge of the the back part of the patient at the edge of the table as much as possible, and this allows for you to get that down up trajectory on the downside of the patient. Um, so, if the, in this patient, the patient's right side is down, so the medial to lateral trajectory then turns into a down up trajectory, and so you don't want the table blocking that. Also, you need to make sure your fiducials are visible at all times. So you want your DRB and the upgoing PSIS um, aimed low but away from the working field and up. Um, and uh, the surveillance marker as shown here can be placed in the lateral ilium. 
That way these fiducials are in light of sight as well as out of, out of your trajectory. So a couple tips and pearls. Um, for your first few cases, do yourself a favor and do single level primary cases first in low BMI patients. So the low BMI patients, you're gonna have the easiest time getting good x-rays, and then um, you can really assess um, some angulation visually, and then if you need to convert to a wilty or um, convert to full open, it's a little bit easier. Um, and then you wanna place your percutaneous screws first before any other work if you're gonna do any inner body work. Um, and that allows for the relationships to be maintained from the pre-op CT to when you place the screws. Because if you do an inner body and you um, move the vertebral bodies away from each other or open the facet joints a little more, that's gonna change the actual relationship on the patient from the CT. So um, it's best in your first few cases to do your percutaneous screws first. And additionally, with screw placement planning, keep in mind the fiducial locations in reference to the screw trajectory and patient positioning, as well as think about your angulation for your T-lift, and then check your skin incisions to make sure you're not too far away and um, that they, you can access all of your trajectories through one skin incision. So what do you wanna expect for your first few cases? You may need some fluoro um, assistance for placing fiducials in big patients. It's fine, you wanna make sure that you're in the right spot and um, you're in solid bone. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to feel through the skin and soft tissue. So just bring an x-ray and makes it, make it easier for yourself. Um, you wanna make sure that your fiducials are both in line of sight and out of the way of the robot trajectory. In your first few cases, this is going to be an issue, just is. Um, line of sight is really a, an issue because people are moving their hands through the line of sight and so you'll get an error message, can't see DRB, can't see reference, can't see this or that. Um, and that's just because um, people aren't used to sort of backing away from the table so that you can maintain that line of sight. Additionally, if there's an issue with the trajectory or the robotic arm is putting too much pressure on the patient to achieve a specific traje trajectory, you can always go back and adjust your screw plan and, and small, tiny adjustments in your screw plan often are all you need to get the robot to be able to reach that trajectory. Or if something doesn't feel right, you can go back and adjust your trajectory and then have the new trajectory um, accepted and move and the robot move into position and then you can feel again and sometimes you're able to get to the right spot that way. Um, and the most important part of a robotic system is the human component. So if something feels wrong, the tactile feedback doesn't feel, feel right, something doesn't look right, the angles are off. Um, one screw was angled one way and the other screw was angled wildly different for trajectories. And if anything feels wrong, just bail. Um, the most important part of this is your judgment as a surgeon and if you feel like something is slightly off just go to a different technique that you're comfortable with and then you can always learn uh, what happened and you can always learn from that later um, but if you feel like there's something uh, not quite right go with your gut and thanks for joining me for my talk robotic percutaneous screw fixation tips and tricks if you have any questions feel free to email me